This is Twit. I know you all are, are loyal Twit listeners and Twit viewers, so you already know about the announcement of Microsoft's Windows 11. And we had a, a bit of a, you know, introduction to it last week from CNET's Ian Shearer, but He's back this week to give us just a little more information because he was able to spend some more time with this interesting operating system, or less interesting from my perspective anyway. And uh, I want to dig into it just a little bit more to find out what's really going on with the current version of Windows 11 and what can our consumers expect this, this coming fall. So, Mr. Ian, welcome to you. How are you doing? I am unbelievable as always. How about yourself? I, I'm doing pretty okay. I, I think uh, I feel like I'm trying to turn it up to 11 these days. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me give you a rim shot for that one. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. So so you, you've, we've already seen what Windows uh, can look like from all of the fancy presentations and things like that that, that yeah. Microsoft did for us. But you've been able to actually dive into it a little bit more and get your fingers on the keyboard and, and see what's going on with this forthcoming operating system. What are some of the things that that you've noticed that is, that's going to stand out and really make a difference for the consumers out there that's just wanting to really elevate their game in computing? I think the biggest thing is that it's just smooth. Like, it works pretty well, which for anyone who has used beta software, right, pre-release test software, that's a big deal in and of itself. Uh, but, you know, Indeed. even beyond that, I feel like a lot of what I keep being struck by is how tableted it feels. You know, if you, you squint hard enough and you kind of look at it sideways, you could swear it's an iPad. And I think that that is part of what Microsoft really is trying to think through is that, you know, yeah, you could say this is, you know, the refreshed competing with Apple and all that stuff. And I wrote on a story on CNET about that very idea. But I think that also there is an element of the fact that a lot of the world's computer users in the next 10 years, they're going to have grown up outside of the the computer paradigm, right? They would have grown up in the time of smartphones and tablets. And for them, switching to a Windows computer is very jarring, right? It's very different from using an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android. Whereas Mac software is a lot more, you know, it, it, it's different, but it, it has a lot of the same ideas. And I think that that's really key is that when you, you use it, you're gonna feel like, oh yeah, this makes a lot more sense. And that's huge. Okay, so you, you bring up a very, very interesting point because I just had a conversation recently with my neighbors here in uh, Sonoma County, and they were telling me that they're they're Mac users and they're people that are older than I am. And it, I found it quite fascinating to know that they are Mac users and, and are power users at that. I typically don't hear that type of jargon coming out of people that are older than I am. I usually hear that from the younger folks like Mr. Sargent there. Um, but so I said, okay, well, what about Windows? Could you jump into Windows? And they said, no, it's just too different. But now with Windows 11, the first thing that came to my mind was, man, it really does look like Mac OS. Um, yeah. Is this just Microsoft's way of trying to grab some of those existing Mac people that are on these older pieces of hardware and try to bring them into this fold or or what? But but also, what about the younger people, the people, the, the kids that are right. in school right now, um, remotely in particular, that are using Chromebooks every single day for class, uh, or sometimes a tablet or an iPad? You know, how are they going to to be able to connect with this operating system? Even or are they even interested? Have you even thought about any of that? Yeah, I thought a lot about that, and I think that you make a very good point. I I don't think Microsoft cares as much about the more elderly people, uh, you know, a lot of people are set in their ways, right? And uh -huh. so using Windows, I mean, I remember I, I used to work for Apple Retail like a whole long time ago. And <laughs> every time I would talk to people, right, they would say, well, it's too different. I don't want to give it a shot, right? right? And I think that that is something that goes both ways. 
So I'm not surprised to hear them say, no, nah, Windows is too different. But I do think that when it comes to the younger people, you make an excellent point. They, they're using Chromebooks at school a lot of the times. They're using iPads. They're, they're not using computers the same way that a lot of us who grew up on DOS or Unix or go back even further are used to using computers. And I think that that's really important. You know, we, we're talking about decades of research into how people interact with computers that we're now starting to see the fruits of. And in a lot of ways, I, I've been inside of those user research labs at Microsoft, and they are fascinating how much effort they go into. And you can see a lot of the thought and care comes through in this. And, and just again, like how easy it is to use, how, how visually pleasing it is and how modern it feels. I think a lot of that is in response to how the world has changed around Microsoft. It's also an admission, I think, honestly, that the world has changed. Right, Microsoft right. used to run the computing world. You go back two decades when they were in, when they were declared a monopoly by a judge, and they had more than ninety percent <laughs> right. market share. Now right. they have about eighty percent. Right, it's totally different, and it's going mm -hmm. even further down. So that says something too, I think. Okay, but I, I want to touch on your article, but I, I had one more thing to bring up about this, at least from a generational standpoint. And it's sort of sure. a funny story here. Um, one day I'm, I'm sitting here at home and, and I run Windows 10 at the current time, like everybody else um, around me. Uh, I, I needed my Plex server service to be restarted. So I asked one of my teenage boys, hey, run upstairs and restart the, the Plex server. And they looked at me funny and it was like, do what now? And I said, well, just go up there, click on the start menu, blah, 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 blah. And they said, what's the start menu? <laughs> and it hit me. <laughs> it hit me right there. It's like, wow, it's a whole different world of computing for that particular generation that's been on Chromebooks and been on mobile devices and don't necessarily think about even hitting Windows key or going to CMD or anything like that. It's just a whole different, different um, way of computing for them. Uh, but, you should but blow anyway. their minds and show them a floppy disk, or as they call it, a printed out save icon. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Now they've seen some of the stuff because I used to do IT support. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, before coming to Twitter, I used to do IT support, and they would come up to my my office and see uh, a, a a bash screen on up there, and, and me staring mm -hmm. at some SQL or what have you, and they thought I was looking at the the matrix in quotes, and I'm like, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that's computing, but it, yeah. it just really blows my mind. It to was have stuff like that. Right. It, right. It was. But OK, so getting back to your article as, as Microsoft, quote, strikes back at Apple. Well, what exactly are, are you getting at here? Is it just the fact that they were saying, you know what, let's make our animations a little bit more, you know, friendly and sort of easy, easy and kind of thing where you minimize the screen and it's all pretty uh what, what what exactly do you mean that they're striking back at Apple? Is it just trying to make everything sort of Apple centric, or just make everything a little bit more universal for being on a laptop versus being on a desktop versus being on a tablet? I, I think it's more philosophical. What what I had noticed, and I spend a lot of time trying to parse through what Microsoft says. You know, I've been uh -huh. covering this company for way over a decade, and and part of what I noticed was that the way that Microsoft talked about Windows 11, they were talking about their app store, for example, not having a commission as opposed to the big debate yeah. that Apple is in with Fortnite and Tinder and Spotify about the commissions mm -hmm. they charge on their app store, right? The mm -hmm. fact that Microsoft said, we would love to have FaceTime on the Windows. I never in a million years would have expected to hear that from the CEO of Microsoft. <laughs> and, and in a lot of ways, what's happening here is that Microsoft, at a lot, for a lot of the tech industry's history, people like Google and Apple, they sold themselves as the anti-Microsoft. Right? Google's right. corporate motto used to be, don't, do, don't be evil. Don't be evil. That was evil. a direct response, <laughs> right? If you, went into, if you went into the BBSs that we hung out in uh, all, you know, many years ago, everyone called oh, wow. it M-Dollar. They didn't call it Microsoft, right? That's right. Because they put That's profits right. ahead of everyone else. 
And so now Microsoft is saying, you know what? We're not gonna be that way anyway. In fact, we don't even agree with the way that Apple is these days. So we're gonna be the anti-Apple. And that <laughs> is what really struck me about the announcements that they made last week. All right, so Mr. Sure, we, we all know Microsoft has has had their, their grips on enterprise, corporate enterprise for, for decades. I yes. have a hunch that's not gonna change because of what's going on with Azure, but Workstations are probably still going to be Microsoft uh, Windows-based workstations, correct? Likely for the foreseeable future. But I think when one of the key things that Microsoft is acknowledging here with you know the, all the stuff that's left unsaid is that the world is no longer building all of its apps on Windows first. They're building mm -hmm. it on phones and tablets first, right? That's why they mm -hmm. have the Android App Store built into Windows 11. Now, it's it's, you know, Amazon's, Amazon's app store, but it's a start. Right? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm sure someone will hack Google Play services on there and get Google Play on there. But I think what's interesting is that it is in a lot of ways what used to keep people in corporate environments on Windows was the fact that their apps were written for Windows. They lived right. on Windows. I've worked for a number of news organizations that have legacy apps built around Windows, including when I was at Reuters and when I was at the Wall Street Journal. And so I think that that says something right there, is that if, if the world is going more to the internet, then it doesn't really matter what device I have. And it's already mm -hmm. happening to schools so it could happen to the corporate world, I, but we'll see, right? I mean, the, it's hard mm -hmm. to tell how much that could change. And we all know corporate world is like the slowest to change anything. Right, right. You know, Windows 11 was scheduled to drop here in the fall of 2021, but mm, enterprise IT probably won't see it until a year from now, more than likely. Just At because least. Of, <laughs> right, just because of all of the rolling out and, and security testing and things like that. Now, you mentioned it. it uh, it doesn't matter what device I'm using. Well, I want to push back on you a little bit for that. So there's been a lot of uh, uproar and, and fussing about what Windows 11 will run on. Uh, there's a lot of yes. computers out here, can, including mine, my rig here, uh, that's actually still restarting because I screwed something up on Windows 10. <laughs> That is pretty decent hardware, but according to Microsoft's existing list of support hardware to support it, mine is not going to be able to uh, run Windows 11. Um, so it's not going to just run on any computer, right? So what what can our consumers, just just the average everyday consumer that's that's wanting to get into Windows 11, what can they expect from a hardware standpoint? Are they going to spend more money? Uh, are they going to be able? To, most people going to be able to upgrade? What are you finding? You know, it's funny, I remember back in, what was it, 2006, 2005, when Windows Vista came out, and mm -hmm. Apple just harangued Microsoft over the fact that so many people had to get new computers for it to work with them, right? Because it had all those mm -hmm. transparencies and it needed new mm -hmm. video cards and all that. New graphics and it seems cards, as though yeah. Windows, 11's, Windows 11 is going to follow a somewhat similar model, at least for now. You know, they are requiring much more modern hardware. So if your computer is like five years old, you you might have a little trouble. And also people who build it themselves. I mean, I'm talking to you. Let's talk about real nerdy stuff, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I built my own rig. I'm running Proxmox with Windows, uh, Windows and virtual ma machines running here. And the reality is that because of that, I don't have some of the security chips that are required by, by Windows, this thing called a TPM, which we have a whole in, in explanation for on CNET. And if you mm -hmm. have a normal computer that you bought through you know, Best Buy, you're fine, right? They've had to have them since 2016. But us system builders are, are gonna be a little bit in trouble. And Amazon, by the way, you can buy a TPM chip. It's already, people are hoarding them just like they did graphics cards. So oh, have fun boy. trying to buy one of those. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> but this is this is the cost of doing business. And look, this is I think part of why Microsoft has put out uh, the you know the expiration date on Windows 10 is 2025. And I think also that they realize that this is going to be a little bit of a lift for people. And maybe they'll keep on Windows 10 for now, but they will when they upgrade to a new computer, they'll get the new ones. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Right. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking about this, and I have just a little bit of uh, of 
concerned because I am, like you said, someone that actually likes to build their, their rigs and I got a hunch. I'm going to have to spend a lot more money, unfortunately. <laughs> Ugh, that just, mm, that eats at me a little bit. Well, I'll bit. tell you this. this. If you, if you built a modern machine running an Intel, uh, I think 10th gen chip or, or a Ryzen chip. So that's what the last two or three years it has mm-hmm. built into a TPM technology. So those issues are actually a non-issue for a lot of modern chips. If you also are running a graphics card that I believe was made in the last five years, you're in good shape. So it's not like it's going to be suddenly everyone has to run out and buy new machines. And by the way, I, I pushed Microsoft on this because I was like, you know, th- you know, there are enough nerds out there like us who, <laughs> who are a little bothered by all of this. And they said, yes, we respect that and we are listening, which is their way of saying they'll probably change it. But in, in, you know, you said also a vast majority and by vast, you want to underline it a couple of times and bold it. Uh, (laughs) Vast majority of people buy pre-built machines and those pre-built machines have had to have all of the requirements that Windows 11 have practically since 2016. So it's not that big a deal. It is annoying for sure. Uh, especially right. for their target market in a lot of ways, right? Us. But right. <laughs> here we are. 